shiny new graphics. I hope you're all caught up now. Shout out to our producer, Michael Bodmer, for putting all that together. I'm Rachel Nichols, alongside our senior writer, host of the Low Post podcast, Zach Lowe. We're not allowed to fist bump. I've explained this to you already. We're too white. Can't happen. This is the Hall of Famer, Mr. Tracy McGrady. And this is how we know it's time for real basketball, because he is back. I am so Super thrilled. Excited. Woo! It's going to count. It's actually going to count tonight. I cannot wait. Coming up, we found out yesterday that Zion Williamson out for six to eight weeks with a torn meniscus in his right knee. Stick around to find out how Zion's injury will impact NBA fans outside of New Orleans. First, though, it's opening day. The 2019-20 NBA season tips off in less than five hours when the defending champion Raptors host the, well, yeah, no Zion, Pelicans. But the biggest game of the night, sorry, World Series, is the nightcap between the Lakers and Clippers. Both LA teams went all in for Kawhi Leonard this summer, and earlier today, LeBron said he thought Kawhi was coming to the Lakers at one point, and then was asked this follow-up question. What do you think swayed the decision for him? Now, how, how the hell can I answer that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Ask Kawhi. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I'm happy, though. Ask Kawhi. I have no idea what swayed the decision. <laughs> LeBron James, also in regular season form. So, Matt, Kawhi's decision to join the Clippers made a lot of fans outside of Los Angeles also happy, just general NBA fans. Like, if you join the Lakers, Kawhi, LeBron, AD, like, why play the regular season? Um, but also, look, there's a question of the expectations now for both teams. Mm -hmm. So who is going to be more disappointed at the end of the season? Which fan base? The Lakers fan base. <laughs> and I, I say that because I look at AD, I look at LeBron. LeBron is going to be 35 years old this year, right? I look at AD and his, his past years with uh, the Pelicans, he's kind of been injury prone a little bit, right? So now playing with LeBron expectations is extremely high. He has to deliver being in a Laker uniform, being LeBron James's teammate. I just don't know how that's going to fare out when you got Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, great defensive team in the Clippers next door and LeBron James being that he's 35, who is their closer? Gonna have to be the closer. Is he capable of doing that at 35 years old? That's gonna. That's a tough burden. So I, I like what I see on paper with the Clippers than I do with the Lakers. You said 35 a lot of times. You're it's a concern about LeBron. <laughs> 17 team. years in the league. So he will be 35 in December. Brian, I know so the question is who's more likely to disappoint? Yes. I think neither, to be clear, is going to disappoint. But mm -hmm. if I had to pick a who's more likely to disappoint, I would actually go with the Clippers because – I think the expectations are higher. I, I think they're considered the championship favorite in the league. No. Paul George is going to be, yeah, they're the odds on. Vegas has them as the championship favorite. Vegas has both of these teams, but I never, I always wonder, is that just about where the money is coming in? And our, our experts pick, I think, are, mm -hmm. is, is more Clippers than anyone else. And Paul George is going to miss the first 10 games. Like, there's a chance if they load manage Kawhi at all and Paul George misses more time. They could be the fourth seed, the fifth seed, and from there, just getting out of the West is really, really hard. So I, I, I think both teams are going to be great and fine, but if I had to pick who's more likely, I'll go Clippers. I think it's adorable that you don't think Lakers fans think the Lakers are winning the title this year. Those expectations are just as high for those fans. Absolutely. They should, be, they, they should just be happy they're in the playoffs and relevant. <laughs> this is six straight years in the lottery. They've been an embarrassment. This is, this is a good time for them. Lakers fans are not just happy to make the playoffs ever. I will say in AD's defense, he hasn't been injury prone the last few seasons. Last season, he missed some games because there was a little issue with the trade thing and that this been, and that, been, and they held him down. Through his career, he's been All of that with he did early on certainly yeah. have serious injury issues. You've got a fair question about LeBron with his age, which I think is what, turning 35 in December, um, I believe Tracy said, and um, the injury, most serious injury of his career mm -hmm. was last season. It's the flip side of having these teams everyone is so excited about is they now are gonna have to spend this season paying that off mm -hmm. and we'll have to see if that happens I want to get to the Pelicans though because man that's a team that had excitement and had a lot of disappointed fans yesterday when they announced that Zion will miss six to eight weeks after getting surgery to address a meniscus tear in his right knee just to do the math for you if he took the full two months he wouldn't be making his NBA debut until the week before Christmas mm. so that's a while there's still some uncertainty as to how and when Zion injured his knee Earlier today, though, Pelicans GM David Griffin spoke about the injury to reporters. Take a listen. 
you know, I've, I've seen a lot of the narrative out there about him that this happened because he's not in shape and he's too big. That kid's a freak of nature. He's in elite condition and he stays in elite condition. He also has a body type that we're learning how to deal with as a 19 year old kid. As we've gone through this process for our medical team, learning how they're going to keep him lean and giving him the core strength and stability and control he needs. Typically, that means that you're gonna do things to strengthen those areas. In this case, he gains muscle mass so fast and gains weight so fast, no one's ever dealt with anybody like him before. So he's 19, it's gonna be a learning experience for all of us. But the notion that this happens somehow because Zion's in poor condition is just asinine. Griff not holding back there at all. Do you agree with him that his weight isn't a problem? Well, I don't think he was injured because he's out of shape. I think he's in great shape, but I think he's too big. I think 280, playing at 280, the style of play that he plays is entirely too big to sustain that for 82 games. This is what can happen to him. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what I suspect that, that would happen to him if he was to have a longevity uh, career, he's going to have to drop down to 260, maybe even get into 250s. 280 is just too much That's weight. substantial. You want him to drop 30 pounds? I mean, 280? Playing at 280 at his size, the way he plays the game, he has to get to 260. Yeah, Griff is, Griff is talking about a narrative, and, and he's right that part of the narrative is poor conditioning, but I, I think a lot of the people that he's addressing are just saying he's big. He's a big dude who jumps really high and dunks a lot and comes down hard a lot. Mm -hmm. And, and Griff himself said, you know, we, we're learning his body type. We're learning what it means to be that age, that that vertical and, and that heavy, and we don't know. So now he's out for, what, six to eight weeks? Mm -hmm. He's really going to have to watch. He's going to have to be on a, a strict diet, you mm -hmm. know, because he's, he can't run. He can't run around. He can't do anything. So it, it's, it's very pivotal for them to find out what it is they have to do to keep him underweight. Tracy, you obviously had knee problems and different. Every, every knee problem is different, but when you see it, guy with knee problems like this now, do you feel like the Pelicans are smart to pull him back right away? They gave him an MRI without even really there being a problem. He just said he had knee soreness. And they're like, oh my God, put him in an MRI machine and, and take care of it. And they're keeping him out now for six to eight weeks. They are being super careful. They should. I mean, this, this kid is the future for this franchise. Yeah. There's no, you don't rush him back no. to get the eighth seed this year. You, you play the long game for sure. Well, there, there, there's a couple other people watching, though, for Zion Williamson. The Pelicans are scheduled to be on ESPN and TNT a combined <laughs> nine times. Nine times between now and Christmas Day. So just for all NBA Switch. fans, Zach, I, I, I don't think that some games are switchable toward the end of the season. I don't. I could be wrong. The NBA TV people will call me, but I don't think these are. I think these are. I think you're going to see a lot of the Pelicans. It stinks. It stinks. <laughs> we still got everyone, Lonzo, but we got Lonzo. I was going to say, I think they're still going to be fun to watch. Day. They're, they're going to play fast. They're going to be. They're going to run watch. up and down, mm -hmm. and let's hope they can just hang around because if they get to March and April and they're seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, they're in it. I hope that they're a fun, a fun team to watch. The crowd, I hope, gets like embraces their style of play, embraces their youth, and they have like a crazy home court advantage. We want to make the playoffs in year one without Anthony Davis. Mm -hmm. Like that would be awesome if every Pelicans home game down the stretch was just must watch, loud college atmosphere. That's what I want. Here's what I know. These guys are going to be well coached. They're going to get up and down and play, and they're young. So if they come in and play every night, every team in NBA doesn't compete hard at a high level every night. Now, if Alvin Gentry could get these boys to compete at a high level every night, they'll give them chances, and, themselves a chance. And they're deep. And if you want to yes. run, you've got to be deep. If you really want to run, you've got to be deep. They will be on television. So get behind your holiday, people. He is really fun to watch. Coming up, one of these $100 million plus contracts will end up being the best investment from the 2016 draft class. Which one, though? Stick around to find out. First, though, it's time for our distant replay. This date, 1997. Hey, T-Mac, have you ever heard of someone called Kobe Bryant? Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> I, I did. Oh, don't do this to Penn Wallace. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> This was preseason uh -oh. back then. The We're talking about preseason. <laughs> he got the whole bench up going crazy. <laughs> oh, from my. right on the dotted line. Those, old, those nice. old Wizards uniforms deserve it. They deserve it.